Great sport. It's been kind of nice getting things organized and growing and beginning to see all the plants grow up into corn stalks and bean sprouts and tomatoes and <laughs> beans and spinach and carrots and all kinds of things growing, flowering and man, summer is nice. But you know this year people want to get you distracted and attracted to other things. You know, they want you to get political or get, you know, off on some other tangent, you know, to do something other than what God would have you to do. Not me. <laughs> you see, that's what devotionals are about. I want you to spend time with God so that He could tell you what to do. I don't care what you do. You can go Timbuktu for all I care. Whatever He sends you to do, that you should do. But you see, that's the point. When God directs you, then it's His responsibility of the results. When you direct you, the results, you reap what you sow. And believe me, your harvest is not going to be pleasant. So, watch what you're doing in the world. Because today's day that, that God has made has caused people to run off without God every day. You know, you've got the the droid and the iPhone, you know, immediately going off to wake you up. And then, of course, you have to check it for messages first before you check with God to begin your day. You have to check it for uh, the digital God that you have on there. You know, huh? well, wait a minute, I got the word here. You know, yeah, okay. Right, <laughs> okay. So, my question to you is, in all that you do and in all of your ways, if you are acknowledging Him, then He's directing your path, right? Is He directing your path? You see, I keep asking Christians on the Internet, as well as in life, as well as almost every day that I meet them, what has God told you to do today? Have you checked in with God today? And do you hear His voice? Do you walk with Him? Do you talk with Him? And 90%, okay, maybe that's a high percent, but some percent say no. As a matter of fact, they don't spend time with God. They don't do what God tells them to do. Because they say, well, you know, Sunday I heard this sermon. I, I, I don't care about Sunday. What did God tell you to do today? But the pastor said, I don't care what the pastor said. What did God tell you to do today? But, you know, you don't get it. I don't know what God said. That's the point. When you can be honest about not hearing God speak, then God can be honest with you about telling you what He wants you to do. But if you're out there running around acting like you know what you're doing, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing with the wrong person in charge. You. You're not in charge. You gave that up the moment you gave Jesus your life. When you Kibo it and you give God the glory, no. When you bow the knee, you're supposed to be giving God the authority, not the glory. You see, people want to give God the glory for what they did. Because really, they're highlighting themselves instead of giving God the authority and hiding all that glory for themselves in some place that God could give them reward for. Because once you've done it in front of man, you've already received your reward. But when you do it hidden away in secret, God rewards you openly and makes everyone know you for what you are. His servant. Serving Him. So the point being is, what are you doing today to serve God? Are you serving God or serving yourself? There's even a third one. Are you serving mammon? Because you see, well, of course we have to vote. Really. I have this question that gets asked me all the time, you know, like, who am I going to vote for? Or what do I vote? Or how, what party do I register for? And all these things that, you know, democracy, and they say that you have to do, and the right to do. And I say, okay, will you tell me what God told you to do in the first place. And I'll tell you what God told me to do in the first place, and we'll see if we can come to a conclusion here. So, did God tell you to register as a... Well, no, I had to pick. Really? So it was picking of what? Well, I had to pick between, you know, those guys and these guys. So, 
because I had to pick between the two, of course I'm not one of those, I'm one of these. I said, well, what about Christian? Are you a Christian? Well, yeah. Well then, which one of those are you in the, the, the parties? Well, obviously that one. Really? So what if God said, be one of those? No, he wouldn't do that. Really? You see, my conversations with people don't go very far because they get upset. Because I ask them questions they know the answer to already, but they won't admit it to themselves. They won't admit that they went ahead and signed up or got involved in or did something without God telling them to do it. Because as soon as a person tells me, God told me to do this, I'll say, good, God bless you, and I will pray for you, brother, and I will bless you with all that I can and give you all of my prayers, and then if God tells me to help you, I'll help you. But if God doesn't tell me to help you, I'm not helping you. <laughs> no offense, but I need to read my own sewing, you know, and do what God tells me to do. But do you see how that works? If you don't do what God told you to do, and you try to do what someone else is telling you to do, no wonder you got so many problems. Man, peace I leave with you, Jesus said. My peace I give unto you. And that peace was by following his way. And his way was to only do those things that the Father said to do. Only those things that the Father said was his will. Because Jesus at any point in time could have ducked out of the cross. He could have ducked out of miracles. He could have ducked out of everything. He could have stayed unknown because we didn't know anything about him before 30 years old. Unknown. Well, a few incidents when he was a child, a couple things popped up, but he could have remained hidden. Couldn't. But the reality is he did those things when God said to him, bingo, the whole world knew because God revealed it. The same thing will be true of you if you do what God says to do. Because as long as you're choosing to not do what God says to do, you will always mess up, screw up, fumble, stumble, and bumble with whatever it is you thought that you were supposed to do. And then you ask God, why did you make me do that and what did I learn from it? Well, the main lesson most people learn as Christians is ask in the first place, seek in the second place, and find in the third place. You know, ask, seek, find. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Hey, how tough is that one? Huh. Man, this Christianity stuff's really rough. It goes completely contrary to all of our maneuverings, manipulations, and confrontations, and confrontations. And you know, I have to manipulate my networking. You know, I have to coordinate my scheduling. You know, I have to do all these kind of... Oh, the wind bloweth with it will. You know, you know where it's coming from, know where it's going. So as everyone led by the Spirit of God. Can we put that in an app? God's either in charge or he's not. Pretty simple. You know what I'm saying. You need to think about it. Do you know why? The reason why you need to think about it in these days, these latter days we live in, is because there now is overload of information and I like to say dispensation of direction, but that's not what you would understand for it to be. But you're being manipulated into forced actions that you don't have time to make a coordinated determination of what God's will is. You're forced into doing something. Snap judgment. God never does anything snap judgment. God planned out before the universe was ever created everything that was ever going to happen. So whenever you're in a snap judgment, you're in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Because God already had it down. You could have known ahead of time by word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and those things that the Holy Spirit could give you if you would coordinate your life with Him and walk with Him in an everyday way. Your life would get simpler and simpler and simpler. And even more and less, less, less and less involved in those things that will bind you to this world when it's time to leave the world behind. You know, like rapture. But if you decide to get more and more involved without praying first, there's no exit strategy for you. I'm sorry. There's a reality check that says, hey, if you owe, you don't go. If you bind, you're going to be confined. If you remain involved, then you will be involved when you should have been walking away. You see the point? We live in the last days. We live in the last generation. We live in a time where at any moment, the trumpet could sound. At any moment, Jesus could call. At any moment, he could say, I want you to walk away. And would you walk? 
Would you come and follow me, Jesus said. When the Spirit and the Bride say, come, can you get up and walk? Or do you have to go check with your children first? Do you have to check with your husband next? Do you have to you know, plan out and coordinate your job, vacation, in order to come and follow me? If you live your life daily, you will be prepared for the time that's coming. When God may say, I want you to move out of this city or this state or whatever it may be. Or he may say, I want you to hunker down and hunker in because there's a hurricane coming. Or I want you to go in the cellar because there's a tornado about to tear your house down. Jesus said all these things we would know and we would not be surprised by them. We would have tribulation, but we would be confident in those times of tribulation because we would have peace. God would be our peace because he would have led us to understand and know how to plan for those things that were going to happen to us. So your day today, did it surprise you? Really? In a negative way or a way of thanking God for it? Because that's the point. If you're being manipulated and railroaded by the world, you're already deceived. You've already lost your first love. You've already found you're not listening to God anymore. And you may find that he walked away because he wanted to spend time with you today. Where are you today? What are you doing? Are you willing to risk your eternity for the sake of not spending time with God? God has been really breaking me of a lot of ministry stuff right now and causing me to, to put it bluntly, water, just water, walk along with my little water wand and water plants and listen to what God's saying. And I have to keep watering and he keeps talking to me and I know that I can't say nothing because I have to shut up and listen. So I just walk along with my water wand and God tells me about what's going to happen soon and what's going on and how people are doing this and how I've been doing this and what's doing that and how this is that and the other thing and I'm going... Ow, eek, ooh, while I'm watering, you know, because I'm holding the wand, the wand's about this long, you know, it's got a little sprayer on it, mister. So I spray the plants, you know. I'm walking along, you know, and it's like, God's going, so, you really want to go do that? No, Lord, I don't want to do that. You really want to do that? No, Lord, I don't want to do that either. You really want to do that? No, Lord, I don't want to do that. Lord, I just want to do what you want me to do. Then, keep watering. Okay. So he's been making me look at the ministry that we've been doing, which was really not watering as much as we should have, but causing people to be distracted in a lot of ways because they were absorbed in always constantly seeking a quick fix and not a quality environment. Because you see, when you have a container that is set up right, that is doing what it ought to do, when it is filled with water, when it is holding soil, fertilizer, maybe, oh, God, that smells so good, when it's doing, when it's doing what it's supposed to do, you just go, huh, <laughs> if you're lice, huh, then you're doing what you're supposed to do, you're smelling roses, or in this case, I think petunias, petunias. But if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, if you're out getting your political fix in, you know, getting organized so that you can stand up for rights, well, you know, the world has a right to do what they want to do, and it's going to send them straight to hell. So the world is going to hell soon, very soon. You don't have 10 years left, you don't have 20 years left, you don't have 30 years left. You'll be lucky if you make it in the next 10 years. Trust me. <laughs> Sorry. Ruined your retirement, I know. <laughs> but God never said you would have it. You're in the last generation. And you know it. But recognizing that, you're supposed to be about your father's business. Know ye not that I must be about my father's business? Jesus keeps saying to his father and his mother, well, it's not his father, but his mother and his brethren, and he had to say to other people, don't you know that I need to do what God tells me to do? I mean, that should have been the motto of Christianity today. And yet, what I hear more often than not is, let's get President Obama out of the way, rather than 
let's do what God has to say. Or let's hear what God has to say. What I like to tell people, even now, although it's kind of sad and I have to quit doing it, but because God told me to quit doing it, was that what if the Lord put President Obama in office to reveal your heart? Where are you at? Because the man is a Christian. The man obviously has gone to a Christian church for 17 years. may not be the church you like. may not be the one I like. I may not go visit it, but who knows? Maybe I will. But the point is, he was there, just like you, in a church. You were there. What makes you different than President Obama? Because of the name on your church compared to the name on his church? You know, that kind of fascinates me. Because he sat in there for 17 years, and people say, well, he, he, he was a Muslim. Well, then what's a Muslim doing in a Christian church for 17 years? Well, he couldn't be a Christian because he was into, you know, supporting all these weird social causes. Really? Then, because he's a Christian in a Christian church supporting social causes, what are you doing? Isn't politics a social cause? Well, yeah, but that's different. I'm in the right church doing the right thing at the right time because I prayed first and asked God. Really? Come on now. Fess up. You're talking to me. Let's be real. I have no idea if you're a Christian, and I have no idea if President Obama's a Christian. The only ones I know that are a Christian are the ones that Jesus said, hear my voice and do those things that I tell them to do. So let me ask you this. Are you doing what Jesus said to do? Because <laughs> if you're not, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Ooh, ouch. Ow, owie, owie. I don't like that one, but it's a scripture. Maybe we could save ourselves a headache and a heartache. Maybe we could stop all the issues that are going on in America today. Maybe we could just begin to act like one man whose heart is perfect before the Lord, God would move heaven and earth for. His eyes search to and fro over the whole world, looking for whom he may be strong on their behalf. And I'll tell you this, you want to know one man like that? This is the only time you'll hear me stand up and cry, it is I. For I have not defended myself against unjust employers. As a matter of fact, I know an employer that my wife saw what happened. As a matter of fact, I had her come up and visit. She stayed there and she saw what was going on. She saw them rip me off for income. She saw me rip me off for my paycheck. Saw me manipulated by the office worker who made false accusations and false whatevers. And finally, I said, you know, Lord, I think it's time to quit. So I told them that I gave them time, and they said, at the time when I quit, they said, well, good, but we're not giving you your exit pay, and we're not giving you this, any of that. I said, that's okay, because I'd already made a deal with somebody to hire me, and the next day I was hired, and I went over to that job and picked it up, and it was fine. And then that person that denied my check got canned, got fired, actually lost their credibility in Alaska, which was very important because your reputation follows you. Sadly, that person, you know, probably left the state, but they had been embezzling. Wow. What's even worse is the business that I worked at, I read three years later, burned to the ground. Wow. And I was the one that made it money in the dead of winter. I filled the rooms in winter. Imagine that. God doing. Oh, it's a coincidence. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> for you. God doing for me what I could not do for myself, being my strong tower and my defense. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. And I have lived that way because the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro, looking whose heart is perfect towards him that he may act on their behalf. And my heart was perfect in that job. I gave all and I prayed daily. And I served them as a pure servant. And God brought judgment on them. It's scary to fall in the hands of a living God. But you know what's scary or worse? Is to not do and act when God does move in that kind of way. And know that God holds the king's heart in his hand and turns it any which so ever way he chooses. And that we have the ability to pray. We have the ability to change the world. We have 
in our hands, in our mouth, in our heart, and in our attitudes, the very presence of God. And we could talk to him and ask him what he wants for us to pray or what he wants us to do in a certain way. And if we do it, if we do it, then he will move on our behalf. So which do you want? Do you want some political party to help you out? Do you want some social occasion to help you out? Do you want some, you know, organization, whether religious or government or somebody else, to help you out? What do you want God, the living God, to move on your behalf? Three times today I've had a ruby-breasted, gorgeous hummingbird visit me. And he didn't sniff the flowers. He came up, hovered, looked at me, went over, hovered, looked over, went, went, back, forth, up, down, and then left. Three times. I know what God wants me to do today. I'm doing it. I hope your God is alive. Because there's a song that says, My God is alive, roaring like a lion. Uh-uh. Sorry. No. A lot of people roar like lions because they're making their God into a lion. But I'll tell you where Jesus is. He's at the right hand, seated at the Father's throne. Seated. And he's just waiting to see if his people will rise up in faith that he gave for us to trust him to send those angels or that deliverance that he alone can provide for us as he asks the Father to do. For he is our high priest, not our roaring lion that comes devouring as though he were Aslan. No, I'm sorry. That's not the way it works. When Jesus comes again, he'll speak one word, peace, and everything's de devastated. Because he holds everything together by his own. He holds, well, all the elements together. All he has to do is say, come undone. Boom, poof, undone. Peace be still to the storm. Still. What will he say at the Valley of Megiddo? Peace. They're all wiped out. Either that or no war, but I'm pretty sure he'll say peace. They all come undone. That's why the blood fills the valley so fast. They come undone. All flesh is as nothing before him. That's how the blood comes up to the horse's bridle. It comes undone instantly. All of them, all at once. There's no like running with swords and conquering and you know like shooting arrows or you know acting weird or fiery darts or something. No. He rides in with everyone to see. And everyone sees him. And he fulfills the promise. And some people will be riding with him. I pray it be me. Because I'd like to see it. That'd be cool. Let's go, Lord. What are you going to say? How are we going to do this? Should I pull my sword? You know, like Peter? Should I try to cut off an ear? Or will he say, peace, be still. And all evil is wiped out in the valley. And the blood fills it. So what do you want? Do you want the miraculous? Or do you want, you know, the manipulation? Because, after all, isn't that what the first three letters of manipulation is? Man. Think about it. It's what man's good at.